Why is this an important thing to know about? Well, a few reasons. Number one, steroids, our number one treatment for stopping inflammation, where do you think they work? They work on NF-kappa beta. They stop NF-kappa beta, no NF-kappa beta, no message to the nucleus, no message to the nucleus, no pro-inflammatory cytokines, a great medicine. But you can see they start really early on. So it's no surprise you get a lot of side effects because it's starting at the very beginning and it's turning everything off, not just the things we want to turn off. Okay, so this fat, we know there's sort of good fats and bad fats, hey? So the good fats are the omega-3s, the fish oils. So how do these fish oils, now that, that, mm, that capsule your mum makes you take that tastes really awful? Yeah, why are they good? Why are they good is they can, they can be good because they insert themselves into the fat in your cell wall. Okay, and we have the good ones and the bad ones, the sixes and the threes, hey? So how does that work? Well, along comes insult, injury, and irritation. It obviously doesn't change that. It irritates the fat again, but you've got a few more of these omega-3s. And what happens is that the inflammatory chemicals which get made are, to term an Australian word, wussy. They're just not as strong. They're a different brand of inflammatory chemical. They still make them, but they're not so irritating. And so less inflammation goes into the body. You still get some inflammation. It's not going to turn it off, but it's less irritating. And so you can see that the balance of fish oils may help, but you can also understand why if that was the only thing you were doing, it's probably unlikely to really stop the whole process. We also know that the omega-3s can do something to do with the nucleus. And so if they can do that, then obviously we're going to be reducing those other pro-inflammatory cytokines. And so these are some of the mechanisms we're beginning to understand, but again, you can see that the whole process becomes quite complicated. So now let's get back to this little balance. The good cytokines are bad. The pro-inflammatory, the anti-inflammatory <coughs> cytokines. So in IBD, we've got this overstimulation of your intestinal system. And these cytokines, they just sort of get out of balance. And rather being anti and pro against each other, the pro end up winning. And you have many more pro-inflammatory chemicals running around your body. So again, another model. This is Joe Blow, anyone with an intestine. And we all, every day, meet something. Okay? And every now and then, all of us have had our intestines irritated. Okay, that's normal. Something happens and they get irritated. Now normally, they get better. But in IBD, they don't. They just keep on being irritated. So what is it? What is it that means rather than getting better, they continue to be irritated? Okay, back to understanding inflammation. The one, two, three of inflammation. So what is it that protects you from the world. The thing that protects you from the world, your, your insides from the outsides, is your gut mucosa. Now, luckily you have a lot of it, but it's just this one little cell thick. Okay, that's what's protecting whatever goes in your mouth to what gets into the rest of your body. Underneath that gut mucosa are all the mechanisms which have to do with all those cytokines. Okay, the pro and the anti-inflammatory cytokines. Now they work through a series of cells, and we're going to call them the effector cells, which make inflammation, and the suppressor cells, which suppress inflammation. And previously this used to be very easy because they also had a 1, 2, 3. They were called the T cells, and we called them the T1s, the T2s, and the T3s. Now, in the last few years we've come to understand the T3s and we now call them the regulator cells or the T-regs. And anyone who goes on the uh, internet, you'll start seeing that word much more often, all about your T-regs. Your T-regs are the suppressor cells. They help dampen down inflammation. So something happens, you get better. How do we understand that in that whole little model? Okay, so something happens. To recover from it, you make more anti-inflammatory cytokines, the suppressor cells, the Tregs come into process, and they settle down and make your gut normal again. Okay, so what happens in IBD? It keeps on going. How does that work with this little model? Okay, something happens, 
and those pro-inflammatory cytokines take over and the effector cells go on. Now, depending a little bit, I suppose, on who you are, depends then on what happens. And maybe those T2s might become more frequent. We thought that those are related more so to UC. Or maybe the T1s will start becoming very active. We thought that they're more so related to Crohn's disease. But it's the effector cells take over due to more pro-inflammation cytokines, due to something happening. What you want to look up up here? So a few little things come up. This TNF alpha. Who's heard of TNF alpha? <coughs> yeah, in fact, many of you have heard of TNF alpha because TNF alpha is that thing that we can block with another medicine, one of which is called infliximab or adalidomab. Okay? This is where we block it. So you can see again, if we block those sort of cytokines, those pro-inflammatory cytokines, we can stop that whole passage of the inflammatory effector cells doing all the inflammation in the body. So these effector cells, why don't, we, why don't we try and turn off the effector cells? We can't affect the something. All these pro-inflammatory cytokines seem to happen. Why don't we start controlling the effector cells? Well, does anyone know anything that controls effector cells? You do indeed. Effector cells are controlled by things like imuran and methotrexate. So again, you can see in the various ways where we try to control and keep inflammation away, it's all about trying to interfere with these different models and different stages of inflammation. We might not be able to stop what is irritating it. What we want to try and stop is how the body is reacting to it and how the inflammation keeps going on. So, the basic problem in inflammation is that the body in IBD overreacts to something in the immune system and that something, probably one, varies from person to person, but two, is probably something very common. 